Welcome to the first episode of History on the Hill of 2023. My name is Monique Sugimoto and we are in the local history center um, here in the Palos Verdes Library District Peninsula Center Library. Today we're going to be talking um, about a couple of projects. First project is called DOPE or Doors Open Peninsula and we're going to tell you about that. That's happening later on this year and we're also going to give you a little update on our Marymount collection um, that we got from the former Mary, now the former Marymount site. So we hope you're going to enjoy this episode today. Um, and today, as usual, I have um, Sue Tittle, our uh, volunteer extraordinaire, um, usually volunteering on a Thursday. <clears throat> I just have to say, Sue just came back from a three-week visit to New Zealand, <laughs> where uh, she brought back, and she always does this, she brought back a little koala bear for me. And I would just like to show my little troll that she brought back from Norway. Nor from Norway. <laughs> so these two guys are always going to be with us. How was your trip, Sue? It was fabulous. I think New Zealand just seems like such a paradise on earth to me the scenery is gorgeous the people are so f from one end of the country to the other the people are really friendly and warm and there's a lot of interesting history there that I didn't and obviously been exposed to but fascinating and now you're back and doing your clipping file project I'm, I'm sure my you, own you were just here. missing doing the clipping yes <laughs> So Sue, the Xerox I'm, machine is my friend. The Xerox machine is always Sue's friend. Um, let's see. So ha, while you were away um, in in January, uh, we have made project or progress on our doors open peninsula project, and so I just wanted to catch you up on that. Oh, great! Um, so as you know, what we do here in the local history center is to document our community, and we've already talked about our 40 families project, which is documenting the Japanese community here. Um, we also help the community document itself through our YSPS project, or Your Story is the Peninsula Story, um, where people can actually upload their own photographs um, to the digital repository to help document the community. Well, this newest project that we're working on is called Doors Open Peninsula 2023. And it all starts on this little photograph here, um, taken in June, 1923. And this photograph, is of a real estate rally that took place in Malaga Cove, um, where the Malaga Cove School is right now. And I, I think you've, you've seen this one before. Yeah. Um, and I was just telling Sue that I did not know when this real estate rally was taken until I found a newspaper article in the Los Angeles Times from, that was dated June 18th, 1923, and it's titled, Fiesta Opens Palos Verdes, the old Spanish estate placed on market. Um, and many acts arranged to amuse the public, but here's the kicker. More than 32,000 people were in attendance at the real estate rally. And that real <laughs> estate astonishing rally- astonishing number. Astonishing number. And um, that was, uh, the real estate rally was held to entice people to come and purchase property on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. Um, so that rally basically launched the modern uh, Palos Verdes uh, Peninsula development. So we had 10 years previously where um, Vanderlip and the syndicate purchased the peninsula and then 10 years after kind of getting the water in, kind of getting the roads um, together, plotting it all out, the first subdivision which became the city of Palos Verdes Estates was ready to go on, uh, on to sale. This is I think so interesting because this is what the Malaga Cove site looked like back in the day. Yes. It looks like the desert. It does. It looks like, and you can just yeah. see the eucalyptus groves in the background. They were starting that they had planted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yep. So you can see all the little, um, the little cars there. So where we are right now, and when you were gone, we did not have our own oh, little seen logo. That. Yes. Oh wow. So we've created um, our own little logo um, for the project uh, called Doors Open Peninsula. Um, one asks, since it's the entire peninsula, how do you create a logo that's representative of the entire peninsula? Well, yeah. So we got what is classic, typical, the ocean, 
the beach, hills, sky, open space. So we tried to create a simplified logo that took care of all of those I think it's things. great. Yeah. Do you think so? Do you Yo, think it works? Yeah, I think it really works. Yeah. So, and celebrating 100, we really wanted to get the idea. And also the peninsula, it's not just Palos Verdes where the real estate rally happened, but that rally and the subsequent development right. really influenced the development of the, of, you know, the rest of the peninsula. Yep. So that is what our goal is with Doors Open Peninsula. We just want to raise awareness, engage the communities so that they can discover and learn the peninsula's rich history, the institutions, points of interest, people, and of course our open space. Um, and how we're going to do that is uh, by holding a peninsula-wide open house. And that's why we have Doors Open Peninsula. So it's sites of interest all over the peninsula um, where and in, adjacent and, and adjacent yeah. exactly yeah and we talked about that. right so it is um, you know through throughout the peninsula and uh, people will go on this one day Saturday June 17th and go and visit these places so that they can learn the history of the sites I think there's so much I've lived here since 1977 there's so much that I have learned and didn't know and look forward to learning mm -hmm. it's an incredible history excellent so you will be the first one to get one of our little yes. brochures <laughs> <laughs> so what we're doing is creating a little brochure of all of the different um, sites that are participating and a little history of our cities um, kind of of the area how it developed and it'll all be put in a little booklet together that's gonna be so cool it'll be fun and um what i think the fun part is when people go to these different sites they'll have their little commemorative booklet uh, and each site will have a stamp and so when people visit the site they'll get a stamp and learn about the site explore it uh, and then go on to their next um, to go on to their next site. It's gonna be like the national park thing. That's where you exactly get right. Your stamp in your book. That's exactly right. It's kind of like the the, the national parks. Um, yeah. That'll be great. Peace. Fun. Yes. So we have um, sites all over the place. Um, we if we wanted to just kind of list off a couple in Palos Verdes estates, we have St. Francis Episcopal Church. Um, you know that cute little Walter Swindle Davis Chapel right yes. there at the entry? Yes. So they are um, going to be participating. We have the Palos Verdes Beach Club, Neighborhood Church in the morning, of course the school district site, the library, uh, Malaga Cove Plaza since it is now a designated historic site, the golf course, Laventa in the morning, uh, and hopefully, uh, well, we are trying to get uh, the Merlot Gate Lodge, the little stone um, gatehouse. gatehouse. Um, I want to line up for that tour. Yes, <laughs> you'll have to. Well, you probably have to get a reservation for that one. That is kind of one thing yeah. about these. Um, there's no parking there, so we're working with our various cities uh, to, you know, coordinate parking uh, and whether how and how many people they can accommodate at one time. So that's kind of the palace area. I can walk. You could walk, but you would still probably have to make a reservation. Um, you just can't, can't show up. Can't just show up. No, okay. I don't think they're just going yeah, to no, show up. I don't think that works. Yeah. Um, and uh, Rolling Hills Estates, just kind of going along from the east, we'll have the City Hall site. Um, so Rolling Hills Estates City Hall, the Weber Center, um, the uh, Kelly's Corner, or the General Store. Oh, cool. Yep. The, uh, the Heritage School, which was the first City Hall site that I didn't know. Going down a little bit yeah, further, okay. we will have also George F. Canyon, um, where people can visit there and learn all about um, that site. Um, popping over on the west, is that the west side? I never remember here. No, that's um, the east side. The east side, well, of the, of the ocean side, let's just call it the oh, ocean side. Oh, the ocean side. side is the west side. And yeah. RPV, RPV's got a whole host of different sites that are gonna be participating. We've got the, missile si the Nike Missile Silo, um, Marymount, uh, the former Marymount um, School, which is now the Salvation Army um, Officer Training School at Crestmont, which is really interesting. Um, that's just right um, over the, you know, the hill there from um, from the City Hall site. Uh, we've got the Lighthouse. The Point Vicente Lighthouse, Lighthouse yes. is going to be participating. Uh, the Interpretive Center is participating. And glory be, since Hatano Farm was just designated, yes. and this happened when you were gone. I, I saw that when I was filing, yeah. Yes, Hatano yeah. Farm was just designated um, a historic point of interest in California. Good. 
which is wonderful, uh, then we will um, have, let's see, going further, where are we got? Um, oh, we're going to get another lighthouse, um, and this is going to be way further south, Point Furman. Yeah. And if people want to um, explore a little bit further south in there, we've got the Maritime Museum, uh, Cabrillo Museum, and the Muller House. So the San Pedro Bay Historical Society is going to be um, participating as well. I think that's great. Yeah, so it's going to yeah. be a kind of a fun, kind of fun project. Um, where I can't wait. Where the public can get out and learn all about its, itself. Um, the other thing, uh, on, the, on the 17th, we're going to be holding a little um, a celebration site on the original rally. So on this original site, we're going to hold um, you know, where the different sites can have a table there. You can go and learn about it, pick up your little booklet, plan your adventure and be off. Um, we're gonna have our city, um, city officials and our elected officials come, have a birthday cake. I think it'll be really great to have um, It'll people. be a fiesta, just like the LA Times said. It will be a fiesta. It'll be 2023. It'll be a fiesta. <laughs> so we're, we're planning the, the, that fiesta, which will be um, a lot of fun, I think. Oh, so, yeah. Yep. Yes. So what do you think? What are your thoughts, Sue? I, well, I, I think it's exciting, and it's exciting how much has happened in the last three weeks, too, because it seems like it's really, really real now because yes. the logo and the... And we mechanics do have, of it and yeah we do have a website also so oh, wow i didn't know that i did not know <laughs> yes that um we just created that a couple of weeks ago we're just getting ready to populate it but that is at what do you think pvld.org forward slash dop so it's dope so everybody will know they could just go to pvld.org forward slash dop and um can, they can start planning their uh, their day. Their day, yeah. Yes. But you would have, an, the sites might not be open, but you could still go see them after if that's, you wanted. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Yep. So a lot of our sites um, are already open to the public. Right. Some of them, you know, aren't, uh, like the Nike Missile site and at the RPV City Hall site. Um, that one isn't open except, you know, but on a special occasion. So, um, and the, the lighthouse being open will be kind of, it hasn't been open, correct me if I'm wrong, Long time well, in a long time, yeah. even pre pat just pre. I think it's pre I, Yeah, yeah. So that'll be great to have the the lighthouse um, participating. Oh, there's also on the RPV site. While we can't get into the um, to the bunker, the World War II bunker, um, you can still go to the outside and visit um, the bunker. Yeah, that's just going to be great. It's going to be history that spans the whole timeline, really, of yeah. the peninsula. Yes. Wow. I know, it's going to be fun. I think it'll be fun for um, our community to kind of get out there and learn um, about our past and about our history. Yeah. One thing I'm really curious about is there's so many sites here. How did you develop the, the list and include, you know, I mean, it's such a broad range. Um, that's a really good question. Um, one of the things that when, when I started, when we first started thinking about the Doors Open Peninsula um, project, uh, it's kind of it's based on an existing doors open theme, oh. so th there are doors open um, projects all over the world, um, and a lot of them and it originated in um, architecture, and so museums, museum buildings, okay. and architecture yeah. to try to learn about that. So we started first by just identifying different um, sites, architectural sites um, on the peninsula. So. We've got a number of already historically designated sites, you know, like Leventa, yeah. um, you know, the, you know, all sorts of those. So we started first with those, but as we were doing it, we thought, well, let's expand the doors open concept into, let's localize it and see how we could adapt it to our ourselves. So this is kind of selfish, but I'm also very interested in open space and things that uh, sites that existed. Uh, or that were planned but never created. Um, you know, open space is a big deal. So I thought, well, what about our open spaces? So we kind of started coming up with different themes of places. So we've got architecture, kind of a history. Kind um, of one thing leads to another. One, exactly, yeah. kind of yeah. one thing leads to another. Um, and, you know, so uh, open, you know, open space. Uh, yeah, that, that, that cultural theme. Like our Japanese farmers, right? You know, um, that that and might it's be another perfect one. because the Hatano Farms has got 
just gotten de designation. Exactly. And the 40 family site, um, I'm hoping to get that, we, if we could just have an unstaffed table there, because we know where that building was. Um, that's over in the Klondike Canyon area. So that's kind of a cultural theme. Um, and in fact, we, so once we kind of started expanding the idea from architecture to, well, what is specific or what is characteristic of our community, of our peninsula, we got these different categories and just started thinking about sites that way. Yeah. Oh. Um, but also, we needed sites that would participate. So, yeah, that, you know, I, so. I can imagine that was really tough to get, to go around and get everybody on board. You know, the, that, that's actually interesting. I think um, everybody that we have spoken to is actually really excited about it to share their history. That's good. Um, you know, and coming out of the pandemic, it's a really nice opportunity to say, hey, you know, we're, we're still um, around, reintroduce themselves to the community. Um, you know, it's, it's not a, it's, it, there's no charge for being part of it. So it's really just an outreach and um, community building um, effort. So. Uh, it's been really nice to see how many people are, or how many of the sites are just really excited. Like St. Francis, I was at St. Francis Episcopal and PVE last week or two weeks or so ago, and it was just so heartwarming. The, you know, they're going to have a table, they're going to provide refreshments. Oh my goodness. You know, they really are they're gonna really do, getting into it. Exactly, they're totally getting into it, and it's really, it's really nice because they have that cute little chapel. Um, yeah, that's, that's really a, it's, kind of a landmark. It's a total, a total landmark, yeah. Well, what I think is nice in, the, in your site selection is there's a, a balance between things that a lot of people know about or have been to or whatever, yeah. and things that, you know, it's like your first time hearing about it. Yes. So I think that'll be a good, a good mix and I think so keep, too. keep the interest level high. I think so too. Like, um, you know, unlike a, a Paris Doors Open where you know, there are buildings that, you know, people can't, or, or people will go right. to. Our, a lot of ours are already open, but this kind of pulls them together. Um, yeah, it gives it a, context. It does. I think you're right. I think it gives people, it gives the entire um, kind of peninsula context and not just kind of scattered um, and, you know, kind of isolated. Yeah. Yeah. What's one site that you'd like to go see? Well, I want to see the inside of Merlot Tower. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to come back to that, but I've looked at that building. I When I was working, I'd commute every day down that street and I'd think, boy, would I like to go in there. So maybe I'll get my chance. Yes. Okay. Well, we will um, We will make sure that you get the, the, er the early bird special. <laughs> So that you can get yourself on the on the list. On the list. But I, I think that's a really special one. Yeah. And that too. one just got um, historic designation as well. Right. And that's so so interesting. You know, we have a lot of sites on the peninsula yes. that are, you know, recognized. Right. I mean, the lighthouse, La Venta. Well, both um, lighthouse. Isn't the Point Furman lighthouse? The Point lighthouse Furman lighthouse is, is too. And the keepers cottage yep, for the, the lighthouse keep keepers. Exactly. The lighthouse keepers cottage. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, so Merlo, now the uh, historic district, um, Hatano. I mean, so it's just, it's fun, like you said, to see it all in yes. context. Yes. Yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, pull it together. Yeah. I love it. Actually, I'm looking forward to going up in the, I was in the lighthouse once when I was a Girl Scout brownie. I don't even remember, but <laughs> they took the kids, and at that time you could make a reservation and take them in like a group of four or five to mm -hmm. see out the top, and it was, it was, Magnificent. Of this point, of Point Vicente Lighthouse? Point, this Point Vicente Lighthouse. This is an early picture of yes. Point Vicente, 1930. But they actually took you, you up to it. the top? Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't you can't, know. You that. can't go outside, but oh, you can okay, look but... out the, the, you could you at could. that time. Could, you could yeah. Look out, yeah. I wonder if it's going to be the same. Well, we will, we will uh, see. We will see. In the folder we have about it, they have instructions for visiting groups. Oh, okay. Right, right. But. It's and been it's, such a while. It, it, that's been a while, and yeah. I'm sure they've got new things they yeah. want and don't want. They have just actually sent me their um, their new uh, brochure, well, new-ish brochure from, I think, 2020. Um, but they also have the lens. Remember the lens? The, the Fresnel, Fresnel lens, lens is very famous. Yeah. Right, and so that, um, which I think is going to be interesting, they can take the lens well, the lens is now at Point Vicente Interpretive Center. So once you go see the lighthouse, you could pop on over to, to the, the yeah, Interpretive Center yeah. and visit that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing that just occurred to me, we had this great conversation um, yesterday, two days ago, whatever, earlier this week, with the California Water Service. Now, 
that's like a completely different sight. Yeah, it doesn't, you wouldn't, that wouldn't occur to you that they would even, I mean, it wouldn't occur to me, but thank goodness it occurred to you. Yes, but what was, well, in talking to them, we found out that they have, uh, you know, there's a little reservoir right here on Crest, you know, Crest and Crenshaw. Never knew that. There's another one near the radar domes. Never knew that. Um, and then they get water from Metropolitan Water, which um, runs that big reservoir out on um, PV Drive. So they pump it up. They, pu they pump the water up wow. for um, all of Palos Verde's water is, wow. is pumped up from there. Um, and so the, uh, the water service uh, is thinking about participating and I think it'll be fascinating for yeah. everybody to learn how, wa how we get our water. Um, are those the down? two waters they pump, uh, the two reservoirs they pump it to, are they covered or are they open? They're covered or? I think they're, co I think they're covered. Okay. I think they're covered. But something like that, I mean, I, oh, like, yeah. I, you know, I would love to see how that we works. We need to find a picture of the big reservoir before it was covered, because that happened after I was living here. Uh, you mean the big one, the, the metropolitan big one on, water one? On, um, yeah, on PV, PV West Drive. and PV Drive North. Huh, okay. There when it was covered. There should be pictures of it uncovered. I think we have a picture of it when it was first being created. So we can take a look through, we can try to find that. Yeah. But that's, that's pretty interesting. I think that would be yeah. interesting. But as I was talking to the water service, we started talking about the original um, pipes that were used. You know what they were? Not metal. Redwood logs. They were redwood logs. <laughs> that's exactly right. That was a guess. That was, they're exactly <laughs> right. They were redwood logs and the historical society um, actually has one of those redwood logs, a, a piece, a remnant of it. So I'm, I'm hoping, you know, if they do participate at the hub site, you know, the, the water service can talk about the red logs or their, or their original logs that carried water. Wow. And they can go to the historical society's table and maybe get to see it. Now, I know I'm pushing the historical society to have their exhibit, but I want to see that redwood log myself. Yeah. Uh, we have just a little bit more about history on the hill in this episode. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Monique Sugimoto. And Michelle Fricke. And we are both archivists with the Palos Verdes Library District. And we'd like to welcome everybody to come and watch History on the Hill with us on RPV TV. <laughs> so we'll see you there. And we are back uh, with some exciting news about one of our most recent acquisitions here to the local history center, and that is the Marymount College University Archives. It's really timely, in case you haven't read today, February 2nd, um, PV News, it is included as escrow closes on the UCLA deal. So now that site is now Marymount, uh, is now the site for UCLA, which is really exciting that it is being kept, personally, <laughs> if I can just express my feelings, um, as an educational site. But the Marymount Archives came to the, uh, to the local history center. I spent a great deal of last summer going over there and packaging it up. And as with any archival collection and accessioning and getting of materials, you always discover a great deal of stuff. And what we discovered was a whole bunch of black and white photographs that were taken mostly of the former Marymount College University site, which is now the Salvation Army's um, Officer Training School at Crestmont, right next to um, the uh, Rancho Palos Verde City Hall. And Sue, <laughs> I had Sue working on this one. This is no lie how things come over to us. They're just kind of thrown into a box. Some things are labeled, some things are not labeled. Um, and Sue actually went through and um, started doing a first pass sort of the collection and do what we call stabilizing the collection. For stuff that wasn't housed, um, she put it in a new envelope um, and then stuff that um, was, you know, a little bit, well, we don't know. Yeah. We just kind of think we have a box called needs work. Um, but that's just how you work with archival materials. Sue, why don't you tell them about the project? Okay, so it was very interesting because there were there were there were negatives, there were photographs of various sizes, and some people were identified, some people weren't. But there were a lot of duplicates, so sometimes you could figure out who the who the people were. But um, one of the interesting things I see it here: the Fathers Club dance from 1956. Mm -hmm. 
So that that should be of interest. Maybe somebody still is around yep. that was at that event. Right, in 1956. So, and with this one, if we look into the envelope, as Sue was saying, sometimes they are negatives. Um, and I'm not gonna touch it because it looks like this one is just a negative and it's not, huh. a, it's not a print. I know there's a print of that. There's a print. Can't find it. We might be able to, yeah. to find it. Yeah, and you've got some stuff over I've there. I've got some prints that are kind of of interest, I think. This is um, the build, the, the completion. They were very proud of the building being completed, but there's also all kinds of pictures of the construction of it mm -hmm. with scaffolding and scaffolding. Yeah. 1962 is the date on this. Yep, 1962. And this is of the, of the, the new, south, the, yeah, of that, of that first campus. Yeah. Um, so it's not just even the, you know, the building being created, but I have one here called Miss Marymount 1959. And we have Miss Marymount um, in, in actually sitting in, uh, in the field with um, flowers, which is really neat. Um, I don't think you'd see this kind of stuff, um, you know, around anymore. So that is kind of an interesting one, Miss, uh, Miss Marymount 1959. Um, but it also documents, um, for example, the uh, what you know what's happening on um, the campus. Here, for instance, is the tree planting, 1961. Um, and do we have a photograph? We do. Oh, and you have one too. Yep. So interesting. So you've got a photograph of tree planting. Here we go. There's mine. Photograph of tree planting. And Sue has one of tree planting. And what's interesting in these, well, you've, you've got a fun one too. Um, with this one that I have of tree planting, you notice that it actually has some red markings on it. So this is what this is telling me is that this is uh, part of a, uh, this photograph was used probably in some promotional materials um, and that they're cutting it up. So you even get to see, um, you know, what is the, the background and why these photographs are, you know, are being taken and what they're being used for, which is kind of neat. Um, well, that's kind of fun for me anyways. Interesting graduation pictures Oh yeah, let's well. see some of your graduation pictures. Yeah. Okay, it looks like the graduates are surrounding um, probably Cardinal McIntyre, which is interesting. Yeah, good. What else do we have? Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, so here's one where on the outside of the envelope it says Mother Gertrude at the at children's Christmas party, and you open it up, and there is even a post uh, a posted on the back saying Mother Gertrude Kane at children's Christmas party on the old campus in PV. So this is kind of interesting because not only do we have the photograph in its little envelope, but somebody has even gone back um, and has identified um, who is in the picture and what the picture is all about. Dream come true for an archivist to have something <laughs> identified such as this. <laughs> Sorry, and it also has the negative in it. But this also, okay, so, because I'm a little bit geekish about these things, but this also poses a problem of how we are going to um, treat the collection. Because you've got photographs, you've got negatives, you've got um, these glassine envelopes, what do you do with it? Um, so it's also kind of a fun, um, well, uh, you know, we have we have to figure out what to do, but the first part of this was just doing the preliminary sort of these materials. Here is the, Did children's, you get the children's Christmas party. Let's see little kids running around. Do we have, um, oh, this one also has a photo in it, so let's see. This one has a, a it, yeah. Oops, here. Yes, here we go. There you go. That's the Christmas. I guess under the heading of famous people who came to the campus. Oh, you have one? But this is a Dodger. I, I'm not enough of a, a baseball fan oh. to be able to tell you who it is, but I'll bet you somebody out there could. Yes. Can anybody identify this, this Dodger? Dodger. <laughs> <laughs> this one has graduation at old campus in PV. Sister DeSacra Kerr Smith, Sister Gregory Natty, uh, three faculty seen, I don't know Florence Schmidt. So let's see what we have here. And so here then we have, that's just a lovely it's graduation photograph. Pristine condition. But then you have what that is all about. So now you've had a little bit of a glimpse of this new uh, collection that we have. 
Um, and we will give you updates on this as we go along. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode of, um, of History on the Hill, and we look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Thank you.